Hi everyone, Sue from IC Sugar. Today we're going to learn how to make a really fun candy cake for a kid's birthday cake that uh, anyone can do from home. Um, it's pretty cool. The candy, love the candy. I don't know any child that doesn't like candy. Um, and look, I have to admit, even I had a little bit here and there when I was making this cake. So, uh, so it's pretty fun. Uh, everything you can um, buy from here, uh, oh sorry, everything you can see that I've used, you can actually buy from Woolies. Um, with the exception of perhaps the food colour uh, and the petal dust and the board. So that might need a trip to a cake store or, or order that online or whatever works for you. Um, I've used three half pound cakes, I think they were, and they're around four or five dollars each. The chocolate ganache I made myself, um, and that's really just uh, Nestle melts, which you would have seen earlier, and uh, cream. And for this cake, I've used uh, a third cream to two thirds um, uh, chocolate melt. For the inside of the cakes, um, you might want to soften it a little bit more than that, and you might want to actually use sort of a half half mix. But anyway, see how you go. This cake was quite soft, so I did end up having to soften my ganache a little bit um, so it didn't sort of pull the crumbs away. And you can do that just by popping it into the microwave just for a look. You don't want to make a mushy mess, <laughs> so probably just two or three seconds just to soften it. Um, now, I'm just using my ruler and I'm just getting roughly where the folds in this bag would normally be. Um, so again, you can just use a ruler. This is nothing sort of too technical. Uh, any, any old ruler is fine. Um, and just measuring out where I want the folds and then I'll cut it away. And I just, um, you'll see in a minute that when I cut down, I actually pull a bit of the cake away um, there, which was really annoying. So probably would have been better for me to use a little bit more ganache on the side <clears throat> just to cover all of the cake before I actually started cutting it away. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So with the ganache, you can actually fill holes or gaps like that later on. So um, I probably wouldn't really be too, too fussed about it. Um, so just here cutting down and cutting away uh, and pulling the cake off. Um, don't really, really be too fussy. We're just, uh, we're just really, really getting the rough shape here. Most of the work in this cake is actually the chocolate ganache. And, um, and you'll see, I do show you a bit of that. And with the chocolate ganache, it's more just around covering the cake as much as you possibly can, piling the ganache on, um, and then scraping it off. So anyway, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So here we go. So with the um, with the chocolate ganache, it was really a little bit hard here, and it had sat for just a little too what too long in my bowl. So I did end up running to the microwave and just zapping it for a few seconds, um, just to soften it. So my the tools that I'm using here is a plain old butter knife, and I have a really awesome butter knife that I've had, been using for years, and it doesn't have any serrated edges on it. Uh, I just love it, and in fact, it's so old that the, the um, plastic handle on it has fallen off over the years, So, but it's really, really cool. Oh, look here, and here I'm making a mess. So I guess the, the really cool thing with this is um, you can be as a professional cake decorator as you want. You're still going to make a mess. And the whole thing is just to have fun. Just enjoy yourself. Just slap your icing on, have a bit of fun. And if it falls off, it falls off. You can always put it back on again. It's no big deal. Um, so here I've just really, really dumped a whole heap of chocolate ganache on. Um, and if you could, if you look now, you can see the texture of this further ganache is slightly softer and lighter. And that's because I did soften it a little bit just to pick up and stop um, the rest of those gaps. Uh, yeah, so just the, so the, the corners and the hard, these are sort of your harder bits. With my ganache recipe, if you um, use a half-half mix, that's more for the inside of cakes or stuff that's softer, but I really like the outside of my cakes to be quite firm, particularly if I'm going to ice over them in fondant after. So I have a couple of corner angles that I use which are really cool for smoothing you if you don't have one of these it's really 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 cool you can actually just use what you saw earlier oh here we go my little tip <laughs> um, you can just use a metal ruler and that works just as well except that 
being a little bit taller, it probably doesn't give you quite the right amount of control, but you can use it anyway. And in fact, for years and years and years, all I ever did use was rulers. Um, but I probably had a couple half size plastic rulers that I used for a little bit more control. But anyway, so with your ganache, you can, you, it's really a case of putting it on, putting it on, smoothing, putting it on, smoothing, and just till you've got it right. Now, here's a really good tip. If you've got some metal, a metal corner or a metal ruler, you heat it up, run it under hot water for a while, and then you can just put it against the side of the ganache and it will flatten any lumps and bumps for you. Um, so I find that that works really, really, really well. Okay, so once you've got your, your, um, your ganache done, you're happy with it. Again, don't worry about being, uh, being perfect. Just set it aside for a little while. This is an optional extra. You don't need to ice your board. I particularly wanted a checkerboard look for this cake, but you don't need to do it. You can have a black board or a white board or a silver board. And if you want to go to the effort of doing a checkerboard, um, this is how I did this cake. So I just I iced it in fondant and I just measured out the boards, used my ruler, as you can see, to get the squares pretty right. Now I've done checkerboards all other ways. I've cut out squares and put them on and for the life of me I can never ever ever get them lined up. It drives me insane. So um, I found this is the easiest way and even though it takes me a little while um, it probably in the end is quicker for me. So I've actually paint the squares. So um, if you're going to put a big cake on this, then you clearly wouldn't paint the middle of it because no one's going to see it anyway. You just paint around the outside. So it probably does take me 20 minutes to paint the squares, but it saves me a whole heap of time trying to line up my squares if I was going to cut out some fondant and put it on that way. What you probably need to do though is if you're going to paint it like this, you probably would need to do it the day before and set it aside and let it dry because you're not going to be staying to want to put your cake on the top and your paint still wet. Um, as you can see here, the ganache has is solid or reasonably solid now, so I can actually pick it up without getting it squishied on my on my fingers. Um, and because I, I let it sit overnight, but you could let it sit for an hour and it will solidify like that. And I've just used a little bit of chocolate and just um, used that to to hold it to the cake. So now, oh, board, sorry. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so now with my fondant, you, um, from my local woolly store, you can actually buy fondant. So you could just use that. I have a big bag or, or a big container that I use. Um, I buy it in seven kilo lots, but um, you're only probably needed sort of a kilo for this and half a kilo for the board. So you can buy it from Woolies. Um, now you need just to put your icing down, roll your fondant out till it's around a centimetre thick. So you don't want to be too thick, but you don't want it to sort of like stretch when you lift it up. Um, and you can see that my like really technical measuring tools was just roughly getting it about right by using my, um, my knife. So just as long as I had the fondant roughly around the, same, around the size that I wanted, not too fast, um, and I just lifted it onto the side. Now you can stick fondant to chocolate ganache with um, um, uh, sort of some egg white or sugar water. You can use plain water, which is what I've used, but be really, really, really careful that you don't drop it on the board because if you do that, um, you'll end up with pit holes because um, any sugar paste or fondant or anything like that absorbs water and it just creates craters. I remember the very first cake I ever made, I actually sat it near a sink and I don't know why I did that, but anyway, I did that it was many years ago. And um, um, I was wondering why there was all these dots on it and didn't realize that water was actually dropping onto it and it literally just eats your icing. So the trick with this is to make sure that you've got your fondant um, that you've put um, on the side of your cake here that you've got it smooth on the sides because when you're going to put your fondant on the side here, you don't want there to be lumps and bumps. So just pull the fondant along so that it sits smooth on the side. Again, you can see I've used a smoother. Um, if you don't have that, you can use this. You can use a ruler or you can use a knife and do exactly the same thing. Um, 
so I've done both sides. There wasn't any reason for me to show you both sides. I've done them both the same. And we're just going to repeat the same thing. Roll your fondant out. Um, so it's sort of, like I said, a centimetre thick, not, 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 not too big, not too thin. Cut it to roughly the same size that you want. Uh, and then we're literally we're just going to lift it. But make sure that it's got something to stick to so you have enough moisture on the surface of your ganache. Um, if you cut the bottom reasonably straight, you'll see that there's not a lot of smoothing you need to do. Uh, just tuck it in there a little bit. Again, you don't need to use a smoother. You can use a knife. And um, <laughs> you can see the silly old me here did it a bit crooked, which was a bit annoying. But you can um, manipulate it and pull it over a little bit if you want to. Smoothing it out. I have a couple of different smoothers I use, um, but really you could have just got away with the white one. Or if you didn't even have that one, just you could just use the, something like the yellow one I've got there. So scissors are awesome. Um, scissors cut fondant really, really easily. It's obviously a little bit trickier to get it down into, as you can see here, I'm using a knife to get it down into some of the finer pieces and areas of your cake. But um, yeah, just trimming it off. And in the next minute, you'll see that I just go through and I haven't cut it anymore, just manipulating the fondant with my fingers and just getting that nice edge there. And we're in gloves at the moment. Um, if this cake was for a customer, I would have worn gloves the whole thing, but um, but it's not. this is just simply to show you how to make this. Um, but I did cut my finger earlier, so hence the gloves. Um, so now also what we're going to do, I was just wiping a couple of little marks off. Uh, you always have a bit of paper towel uh, around, uh, just a, a drop of water to take off any marks that I've left. Um, then we're going to go and do the other side exactly the same way, which again, I'm not going to film because you've seen one side, <laughs> so you don't actually need to see both. In hindsight, I put a strip, you'll see in a minute, across the top. And I think after I finished it, I would have liked it if I had not done that and put my fondant on so it was slightly taller at the top rather than a strip and you'll see what I mean in a minute but hindsight's a good thing so it's just a just a little tip when you go to do this um, so yeah so here you'll see that I realized that when I want to put my candy in that I didn't have my fondant around the side quite high enough so I've put a strip on which looked fine but it would just would have been, yeah, and I've got, uh, I've got it there. It just would have been nicer if I hadn't and I had lifted, yeah, had the so side slightly taller. But, you know, look, in the end it came out okay. But so I, I suppose a tip here is bring your fondant up a little bit taller and then you don't need to do this outside strip unless you like it, which if you do, that's cool. You can just do the same thing. Um I've just used a tiny little bit of water again, but like I say, sugar syrup or cake glue if you are going to go to a cake shop, but I'm assuming that um, that you might not have had time or what have you, but if you've got cake glue around, that's great. But sugar sh syrup, <laughs> spit that out, or egg white or water um, does just as good a job. So just tidying it up here a little bit, making the corners a little bit neat. And the trim looks quite good. Um, right, so now we're going to move on to the Elmo. So with Elmo, he's quite, uh, is really only three colours. Um, he's black, uh, red and orange um, and around his eyeballs are white. So the reason I did this cake white was simply to make it easier for anyone who's trying to copy this and we're not mixing gooey different colors and all sorts of things um, and it just saves you having to paint white over for the eyeballs so elmo is pretty simple um, it, really all you need to do as you can see i used an ipad i put some wax paper over it drew out the rough shape cut it out stuck it on here and um, just penciled lightly around the outlines and merely coloured it in like it's no different to doing a colouring in in a colouring in book. Um, if you don't have time to do this there's other options you can get an edible image and cut that out. Um, you could look I, 
I really like everything to be edible, but if you don't have time, you could probably get uh, a picture or something and cut it out and stick it on as as the very last option. But but painting is really not too hard. It probably took me around 15 minutes because, like I said, it was really um, no different to playing, you know, just painting, colouring in or doing colouring in in a, in a book. So um, quite uh, quite almost quite simple and I think a couple of the other characters are really like Cookie Monster and stuff like that are similar um, and you can follow this same sort of idea oh, here we go and I'll put a little hat on the top as well or a little party hat um, so what you'll see here is I've got dots around the outside so you can actually put uh, paint some dots on with any food coloring that you've got or you can or you can actually get the um, what we've got here dollar sprinkles I think they are and you can just stick them on dab them with a bit of water and actually just pop them on and give you the dots on the side of the cake um, I also have handles here and the handles is basically just fondant and I've just taken two strips and rolled it in a coil um, and literally just stuck it on um, I'm airbrushing the shadows here but you don't actually need to do this uh, this cake actually looks just as good without any of the shadows so you can just leave that off if you want to um, alternatively as I put in earlier you can get some petal dust and you can use a paintbrush and you can just uh, dust these shadows instead so Again, you can do it with or without, and it looks it looks really just as good. So I went to the lolly shop and I bought a whole heap of lollies, and I probably bought way too many. I, I haven't shown you here, but I probably ended up eating a few myself. It was pretty nice. Um, so I guess the idea here is I always start. I realise when I am decorating the top of anything I do, um, I start with the tallest components first. So I've put in my main features first and the taller areas and then I sort of work in and around it. Um, I went and bought a whole heap of freckles and just stuck them to a back of a couple of timber skewers that I've had, uh, just using some melted chocolate. So you can see I'm just sort of building my outside shape um, and then I'll just go around and put some in the back. So it's really quite, it's quite easy. And this is heaps of fun. This is, this was my f most fun part of the whole cake. Um, I did make, I did uh, most of the lollipops I bought. I did have a go at making my own candy and I really suck at it. So it's probably not something I like to do all that often. Skittles, well Skittles my favourite. So to fill in all the gaps at the top, um, so no one sees, I just poured in skittles cover all those gaps and those holes and dump a few around the board now if you're going to take this to a party you'd stick most of that down on a board um, or you would um, travel or you wouldn't travel with it like that but anyway okay thank you all for watching I hope you've enjoyed it